Um, so I'm Julia. I am a clinical psychology doctoral student um, at East Tennessee, um, so ETSU. And today we're going to be talking about health disparities. Um, so before I jump in, um, usually on Zoom, there's like a way to bring up a whiteboard. Um, let's see how I do that. Yeah, and I went ahead and made you host too, so that you had um, all those capabilities. Okay. Usually, when you go into, let's see here, try and see if you go to share screen mode and see if there is an option to add a whiteboard from there. Yes, I see that. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, so here's the whiteboard, and I think everybody can write on this. And so the first thing I wanted to do, if it's okay, if, if everyone can just introduce themselves and um, I don't know, maybe like say what grade you're in or what class you're in, um, just so I can get a sense of where you guys are at. And then after that's done, we'll do more on that on that whiteboard and I'll introduce the activity. <clears throat> um, and we can just go in whoever wants to go first. Do you want everybody to write on the whiteboard or do you want that to be a saved for a second? Um, yeah, the whiteboard is for an activity that I'm going to do after. Okay. Interviews. Okay. I just wanted to see how to do that first. Okay. All right. So um, I can call on my kiddos from the order that I see them. Okay. Let me do that. So Grace, would you like to go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Grace and I'm in 11th grade. Jonathan. I'm Jonathan and sometimes I forget, but I think I'm in ninth grade now. Okay. Should be in 10th though. So. Gotcha. Yeah. Emmy. I'm Emmy and I'm in ninth grade. Mia. Hi, I'm Mia. I'm in ninth grade. Sorry, I don't know if you can hear me. It's really no. loud. Can hear you. Tanner. I'm Tanner and I'm in ninth grade. Chloe. I'm Chloe and I'm in 10th grade. Carter. I'm Carter and I'm in 10th grade. McKenna. I'm McKenna, and I'm in ninth grade. All right, let me see. My screen isn't allowing me to scroll down, but I think that's everybody. Oh, and then Miriam also, oh, there's some non-video participants, and Miriam chatted in there. Miriam, and she is in 10th grade. Did I miss anybody who was not on video? All right, I think that's it. Okay, awesome. Uh, it's nice to meet everyone, and I'm happy to be sharing, um, you know, more information about this topic. So what I wanted to start us off with is kind of getting a sense of what you guys already know or may have heard of or what kind of pops into your head when you think of the phrase health disparities. Um, and so on this whiteboard, you, you can just use the text function to type um, you know, anything that you want, any kind of phrase or word or term or any information that you already know about health disparities. And then we can discuss after I give you guys a couple of minutes. Does everyone know how to um, do that? So if you go up to the top of your screen, you'll see viewing options. And you'll see, um, does everybody see viewing options at the top of the screen? If you kind of hover your mouse over there, if you select that, you'll see um, some annotate. And you select annotate. It'll give you options to um, participate. There you go. Jonathan figured it out. Does anybody else, anybody else having trouble or figuring it out? Right. 
right, Mike, I figured it out, awesome. Let me know if anybody uh, is having trouble and I can um, go over the instructions on how to do this again. Thank you. So those who can't reach healthcare as easily, gotcha. That's a good point. Tanner, it may or may not work on your phone. Some phones allow it, some phones don't. Um, see if you can find like a, a dot, 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 um, something with settings or something. If you can't figure it out, it's, it's totally fine. You can just type something up in the chat box and we'll enter it for you. Yeah, that's a good idea. Some of y'all's uh, text boxes may have overlapped other people's. So feel free to speak out if you want to um, complete sentences or move it around or whatever. You could be able to drop and drag and move it too if yours is being covered up. This might be a topic that maybe you've never even heard of before. Um, and it is kind of a lot to, to unpack because it's, it's an umbrella term that there's kind of a lot that falls under it. So if that's the case, that's totally cool too. And we can just jump right in. And um, sorry, so sorry to interrupt. I, I promise I'll try to not do this so often. Um, since you're the host, can you just check and make sure, I don't think so, but um, if you go under participants, can you just check and make sure that nobody is in the waiting room, please? Sure. I don't know. I think we have everybody, but I'm not sure. Um, I just admitted someone, so. Perfect, okay, thank you, sorry. Good, no worries. Okay, so someone put racism in healthcare. All right, I'll give you all one more minute and then we'll jump right in. Okay, so it sounds like a couple of you um, have a, an idea or something comes to mind when you hear the term um, health disparities. So I'm gonna share my screen so we can see our presentation. Let's see. All right, let me move this a bit. There we go. Okay, so some of you may recognize, whoops, sorry. Some of you may recognize this person. Um, he played the, the Black Panther. Um, highlighted in the media because he recently passed away from colon cancer and he was quite young he was 43 and so I wanted to highlight this because some of the kind of articles in the media that were talking about his death 
um, kind of explained how health disparities um, can contribute, like contributed to his presentation and um, kind of his lack of access to proper care early enough to catch the cancer and have um, kind of a higher chance of survival. And so the average age people get diagnosed with colon cancer is actually 68 years old. And so why was Chadwick, is his name, Chadwick Balsman, um, was the exception? Why was he the exception? And so, like I said, some say that health disparities could have been um, contributing to this. So what does it mean? Uh, here are kind of two general definitions of health disparities that can be found um, kind of in a hospital or like a medical insurance um, explanation. And so, and I think this uh, came from the CDC. So differences in the incidence, mortality, and burden of disease and other adverse health conditions that exist among special population groups in the United States, and then differences in health that are not only unnecessary and avoidable, but in addition are considered unfair and unjust. Um, so kind of going back to Chadwick, you know, according to the American Cancer Society, Black individuals are about 20% more likely to be diagnosed with colon cancer and 40% are more likely to die from it. Um, and so these disparities are actually twofold. So not only are Black individuals dying from the disease at a higher rate, they have less access to screenings to detect cancer earlier on. Um, and while all racial groups are benefiting from local and national efforts to educate the public about screening, Black individuals are still um, benefiting at a slower rate. So that's can be pretty interesting, I think. And so what are the sources of these health disparities? Um, so that figure right there kind of explains bias. So we have like objective facts and then we have kind of what, um, what information that we're gathering that kind of confirms the belief and then what we see. So there are several different types of sources of dis disparities, including individual, provider by uh, based flaws within the health system and societal and environmental factors. And so individual factors include a variety of health behaviors, such as maintaining a healthy weight or following medical advice. So, you know, when individuals go to a doc, go to a doctor um, because they're having, you know, maybe they're feeling sick or maybe it's just for preventative screening. Um, you know, it's kind of up to them to decide if they want to take the advice or the suggestions of the medical provider and some individuals don't and some do. And so it really kind of just depends on the person. So provider factors kind of encompass issues such as that provider bias, like I said, and kind of cultural and ling linguistic barriers to patient provider communication. So, you know, providers who kind of already have a sense um, or a perspective of, of a group of people or someone coming in, then they might, again, um, kind of miss out on certain pieces of information that they might not have thought of before. And so individuals care can fall through the cracks because of that. Um, also, if, you know, a provider is, un is not familiar with a individual's culture or their language or their background um, that could make it really difficult to provide um, kind of quality care and meet the person where they're at. Um, and so those kinds of things can be really helpful in training purposes, you know, not only in med school, but also as like a continuing education type of um, action. And then also the way healthcare is organized, financed, and delivered also shapes those disparities. So, you know, as I mentioned, there's kind of a many different pieces of this puzzle that kind of all fit together that can create these gaps that we're seeing um, kind of in our society right now, but they've always kind of existed. Mm -hmm. 
And so moving forward, one you know main um, factor that's part of like societal and environmental is something called the social determinants of health. And so that can include poverty, unequal access to healthcare, lack of education, stigma, and racism are the underlining contributing factors of health inequalities. So this is like another really big kind of umbrella term um, that is being talked about a lot recently as kind of an intervention piece to get um, people more access to care and kind of help with that health inequality piece. So we're going to watch a quick video about kind of the details of um, what social determinants of health mean and how they kind of apply to all of us. So let me pull that up real quick. And at any point, if anyone has any questions, feel free to like interrupt me um, or if I'm going too fast, okay. Hi, and welcome to this video on the social determinants of health. This is a very important concept to understand because its impact on the health of individuals and of populations. We'll be taking a look at what it is, how it impacts health, and a useful framework to understand it. Take a look around you, your family, friends, and other people around you. What's clear is that health is quite variable, not just between individuals, but also across different population groups. Let's take an example. In 2015, the life expectancy of a child born in Sierra Leone was 50 years, whereas in Australia, it was 83 years, a difference of 33 years. But there are differences even within countries. For example, in Australia, the life expectancy of indigenous people is about 10 years lower than that of non-indigenous people. Within a population, health is also influenced by social status. People with higher income, a higher level of education, and a better occupation have better health and a greater life expectancy. Health status can change as well. For example, studies of migrants have shown that the type of diseases, health behaviors, and risk factors are different in migrants compared to those in their country of origin. So why is there so much variability? To answer that question, we must understand the factors that can influence health. Let's have a look. A person's health is influenced by a range of factors called determinants of health. These include who they are, individual factors such as age, sex, and genetic makeup, and also what they do. This includes their health behaviors such as smoking, physical activity, alcohol use, and diet. Health is also largely influenced by the conditions in which people are born, grow, live, work, and age. These include their social and community networks, the socioeconomic, cultural, and environmental conditions that people live in, and also health systems. These are collectively called the social determinants of health. The social determinants of health are ultimately shaped by the distribution of money, power, and resources at an international, national, and local level. They have a marked influence on health inequities which is the unfair and avoidable health differences between different groups of people within countries or between countries. Now, there are many different social determinants of health, working across many levels and with complex interactions between them. So, to understand and explain how these determinants influence and interact with each other to affect health and well-being, several models or frameworks have been proposed. There are many different frameworks that do this, but let's have a look at one useful framework developed by the World Health Organization. According to this framework, there are two broad types of health determinants that influence health and can lead to health inequities. These are structural determinants and intermediary determinants. Structural determinants refer to the socioeconomic and political context in which a person is born into and lives in. 
These include governance, how society organizes itself to make and implement decisions, economic, social, and public policies, and also the social and cultural values that communities place on health. These factors can determine and lead to the unequal distribution of material and monetary resources, which shapes a person's socioeconomic position. The socioeconomic position describes a person's place in society, which can affect their exposure, vulnerability, and outcomes to conditions that have an impact on their health. The socioeconomic position is determined by a number of factors, such as education, occupation, income, gender, race or ethnicity, and social class. The socioeconomic position in turn affects the intermediary determinants of health. These include material circumstances, like the quality of housing, the financial means to buy healthy food, clothing, or other requirements for healthy living, and also the work environment. Psychosocial circumstances, like stressful living circumstances, relationships, and social support. Behavioral and biological circumstances. In addition to these, Health systems have an impact on the type and quality of health care available to people. It also determines how easy it is for people to access health services and receive the health care they need. Social cohesion and social capital are factors that bridge the structural and intermediary determinants. They describe the willingness of people living in a community to make sacrifices and to cooperate with each other for a wider benefit. Intermediary determinants influence health and health inequities. It's also important to know that the links between these different factors are not always linear, but are complex and can go in both directions. For example, poor income and education can impact health, and also poor health can limit opportunities for people to participate in the workforce or receive education. Also, if population is affected by a lot of disease, it can have a broader impact on the socioeconomic and political context. So how can we change or influence these determinants? Addressing the social determinants of health is not an easy task. It involves identifying the structural and intermediate determinants of health and taking appropriate actions to improve them. To do this requires actions across all sectors of society and at all levels, including local, national, and international. The actions will depend on the existing socioeconomic and political context, resources that are available, and commitment for action. And that's a quick introduction to the social determinants of health. We've had a look at what it is, how it impacts health, and a useful framework to understand it. All right, so let me go back to the presentation. Health, it's the state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, not just the absence of disease or infirmity. And good health is something we strive to achieve. Okay. So that video was a lot to unpack, um, but hopefully you were able to kind of get the highlights. Um, so how does this impact us? Well, health disparities, as they kind of mentioned in the video, are often self-perpetuating. So for example, you know, parents who are too sick to work can become low income, and then unemployed or low income individuals are less likely to have access to health insurance. And so if they're unable to afford health care, they could get sicker, making them even less able to find a new job, and so on. So it can kind of feel like this, you know, broken cycle that feeds into each other. And so getting out of healthy and out of poverty can become increasingly difficult. This can also be seen in pregnant women and new moms. So a woman who experiences chronic stress while pregnant, um, such as stress about their financial situation, is more likely to have a preterm baby. And babies born too early are at a greater risk for serious health issues later on in life. And so you can see that this kind of impact affects future generations as well. Um, and so many of those medical conditions can lead to pregnancy complications and preterm delivery, like I mentioned before. And so that image of the cycle of environmental health disparities, it kind of um goes a little bit in depth of how the cycle is maintained by these different factors 
So which groups are more affected by this? So, you know, many groups continue to face significant disparities in accessing and using care. So um, kind of among adults, we know that Latinx, Blacks, and American Natives are more likely than whites to delay or go without needed care. And so also Black and Latinx adults are less likely than their white counterparts to have a usual source of care or to have had a health or dental visit in the previous year. So low income individuals also experience more barriers to care and receive poor quality uh, of care um, compared to high income individuals. And then disparities in access and use also um, occur across other types of dimensions and sources of identity. For example, individuals who live in rural areas face a range of barriers in accessing care as well. And so on the slide, it kind of breaks down which groups are likely to kind of experience some of these gaps in care. So, you know, racial and ethnic minorities, they have higher mortality rates and higher rates of com uh, comorbidity, meaning that they have several kind of serious health presentations at the same time, such as like maybe high blood pressure and then diabetes. Um, and then immigration status. So those that are not considered a citizen may have harder access um, to getting health insurance and then may not even want to go get health care due to a fear of deportation or detainment or anything like that. Um, and then the LGBTQ community um, kind of that provide sometimes that provider bias of not understanding kind of the unique health needs of this group um, can really affect that quality of care and just generally like routine physical screening. Hey, can I, um, can I just uh, say something really, really quick? Sure. Um, so sorry to interrupt. Um, can we make sure that uh, students, I'm talking to the students directing this to y'all, please um, make sure that nobody is um, using the chat box for anything. Uh, right now, unless you are asked to type in the chat box, um, I'm seeing a lot of um, uh, intolerance being typed up in there, um, stuff that I, I will not condone in the classroom. So please do refrain from um, using the chat box unless you have an actual question that you are directing at the speaker. And even then, I do ask that you wait until the speaker is done presenting to as to not cause any disruptions in the class. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, I did not see any of those chats because I'm um, not able to access them. Okay, let's see. But um, I can definitely understand that there are some kind of opinions about this and I think, you know, everyone's kind of entitled to those and that's fine. Um, I think it's just kind of helpful to understand other people's perspectives on these um, topics as a way to kind of diversify how we view um, kind of these uh, issues that are in our society right now. But if there are any questions, like I said, feel free to voice them rather than putting them in the chat because um, I have harder access to looking at the information in the chat. <clears throat> Um, and then kind of going back to that reality, uh, sorry, rurality piece, uh, those that do live in uh, rural regions, kind of like where we are right now in East Tennessee, um, it is kind of harder to access medical care as there's just fewer clinics. Um, and so that can prevent, you know, having quality of care and that can lead to higher rates of heart disease and cancer, some of these more serious uh, physical illnesses. And then social economic status. Um, so individuals who are considered low, um, um, kind of low income, have maybe a greater difficulty in getting health insurance. Um, and so without health insurance, we don't have access to similar or um, better care. So it's important to keep that in mind. 
Um, so just kind of delving deeper and looking at the numbers specifically um, of how these individual groups are affected by um, kind of health presentation. So infant mortality, uh, so babies born to black women in the United States die at more than double the rate of babies born to white women. Um, and then black individuals also have a high, highest risk for dementia and are twice as likely to develop Alzheimer's disease. Um, and then people with lower incomes and education levels are more likely to get cancer and die from it compared to um, those that have higher income. Um, and then that gap also appears to be, to be widening. For obesity, even after controlling for family income, um, rates of obesity in Black women and specifically Mexican American men are substantially higher than any other race or ethnic group. And then smoking, as we had talked a little bit about in that video, um, as a health behavior, so Native American and Alaska Native individuals have disproportionately higher rates of smoking, as do individuals living below the federal poverty level and those who are unemployed. Um, and so that's just, you know, something to keep in mind. And then Black individuals are more likely to die from heart disease compared to any other racial ethnic group. And the life expectancy expectancy uh, differs by 10 years for black men compared to white women. So black men, the average die at around 70 and for white women, it's 80. So there's um, quite a significant discrepancy between those two ages. So how do we address some of these health disparity issues? So this is kind of like a massive undertaking that several different um, kind of organizations and different levels are trying to um, change in order to help close those gaps. Um, and so here are the, like the, um, how do I word this? Here are some kind of highlights of what some of these organizations are trying to, you know, write policy on or talk more about or educate folks on um, as a way to change and close some of those gaps so we can have kind of health equity for all. So one aspect is economic stability. So that kind of refers to things like food security, income or wealth, housing stability, and employment opportunities. So providing housing assistance has been shown to improve both the psychological and physical health of individuals. And so going back to that social determinants piece, you know, where individuals grow up, their communities, how they live really impacts health. And so um, kind of providing some assistance and some wraparound support in that could kind of offset some of those um, health issues that are coming up because of it. And so also it's been shown that providing kind of flu vaccination, uh, vaccinations in lower SES neighborhoods could also help reduce the gaps in hospitalizations for the flu. Um, and so kind of just thinking through that, and then quality education for all. So that really means investing. Um, so like the government, state officials, um, also like privatized kind of organizations or groups that really um, care about this issue and wanna see change can invest in things like language and literacy and early childhood education and high school graduation and uh, higher education could help close those health gaps in a number of ways. So increasing access to center-based early childhood education has been shown to decrease crime and teen births. And so high school uh, completion programs also have strong returns in that investment, often resulting in improved economic benefits that exceed any costs associated with the program um, and in part to kind of avert or offset some of those healthcare costs that you would potentially get um, from some of these health issues that come up because of these gaps. 
Um, and then the next thing is kind of increase access to healthcare and improve health literacy. So um, this would just mean, you know, having insurance companies maybe providing more coverage for preventative type screening. Um, it could be, you know, educating, uh, you know, kids and children in school about some of these health um, issues like we're doing now, like in your in this presentation currently, like just providing some kind of facts and and um, more information about what this this topic means um, as a way to kind of increase uh, education around this. And then the neighborhood change would really just mean um, trying to kind of improve housing, improve access to like healthier um, kind of grocery stores and food options, um, finding ways to reduce crime and violence. Um, and so just really going on a community neighborhood base level change. And so these are just a few that I pulled out on a, like a systemic or a large scale level of some of the work that's um, kind of been around to help address these health disparity issues. But there's still a lot of other things um, that we can do as individuals to kind of um, facilitate this change as well. And I think part of that is just trying to get as much information about the topic as possible and making sure that we are um, kind of learning what we can and absorbing what we can. And then, you know, being open to learning information that might not, um, you know, be in line with something that we've heard from other people or from other things and just kind of being open to um, learning about the very, you know, many different aspects and sides of this uh, issue. So just doing a quick vocab check um, on a couple of things that we touched on. So we have health equity, bias, and social determinants. So health equity, again, is achieved um, when every person has the opportunity to attain his or her full health potential. And no one is disadvantaged from achieving this potential because of social position or other socially determined circumstance. And so that's a very um, kind of formal definition, as I said, like from the sources that I got, like the CDC and the WHO and stuff like that. Um, and then bias, um, as I mentioned before, it's just, you know, prejudice in favor of or against one thing, person or group compared with another, usually in a way considered to be unfair. And so some of the time we don't recognize that we are being biased or, um, you know, maybe our intentions are not to be that way. But I think kind of building up that awareness and kind of having that open conversation with people and learning things that you may not have thought of before can really help shine the light on some of those biases and kind of expand the way we approach others um, that may be different from us or that we don't understand um, kind of where they're coming from. And that can help connect us and build that bridge to them to, to have better um, kind of access and address some of these health disparities as well. And then the last um, one we talked about was social determinants. So again, that is, you know, conditions in which people are born, grow, live, work, and age. They include factors like socioeconomic status, education, neighborhood, physical environment, employment, social support networks, and access to healthcare. Um, so the next thing is I just wanted to play like a quick game of Jeopardy um, in which you know, you guys can pick whichever question you want to answer and then we can get points off of that. I don't know how much time I get. Um, so we can just play for like five or six minutes or so. Um, does anyone have any questions or have any thoughts before we jump into this next thing? And it, you know, it could really just be about, you know, any concerns that you have or any confusion. Okay. 
Um, Dolly, how much time do I have? Because I was going to jump into playing a quick game of Jeopardy. Yeah, you have it. You have some time. You're good. Okay. Let's pull it up. Okay. I was thinking we could do teams, but I'm not sure how we could set that up. Um, it could just, to make it easier, it could just be like a free for all of anyone kind of calls, um, which question you want to answer, or we could break out into two teams. What do y'all think? Do you want to do free for all kind of jump into it or should I, um, assign some teams? We have nine kiddos i can be on a team to make it even if you want me to do that okay it might be a little better if we do it like that it's better if we do that okay i'm going to split the screen the way i see it all right so me grace emmy carter chloe team two mia evie tanner mckenna jonathan So everybody, uh, and let me, I'm trying to figure out how to. Mm. Break that up so everybody can remember their teams. Okay. I'm gonna type team one in the chat box. Remember, actually, you know what? I'm gonna call you off with one and then y'all just remember your own numbers, okay? All right, um, Grace, one. Oh my gosh, I forgot my own group now that we stopped, started sharing and it, and it rearranged everybody on my screen. Oh, sorry. No, 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 it's totally fine. All right, I'm just gonna do it again. I'll, I'll redo it again. All right, Grace, you're team one, Emmy team one. Um, Evie, did I have you on team one? It might just be easier to do a free for all, like honestly. Okay. Let's go ahead and do that. Sorry, I can't, for some reason, I can't see everybody anymore either. That's fine. Let's just do that. <laughs> okay. No, no worries. Sorry, I tried. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. So just anyone can call out. Um, we'll go from there. There's only a few questions, so. All right. So let's just jump in. Um, you don't get to see the question, but you get to see the point value. So the higher the points, the more uh, difficult the question is, but it's all kind of stuff that we've already been over in the presentation. Let's do the left side for 100. <laughs> all right, so what does health disparities mean? I'm the cheater, so I feel like this disqualifies me from answering. <laughs> Anybody think of that? You can put it in the chat too, if that's easier than kind of calling it out. Um, let's see. Is it inequities? Does this disparity mean that things that make it unequal for other people? Mm -hmm. Mm, let's see. So here was that formal definition that we went over, kind of the differences in the incidence, mortality, and burden of disease and other adverse health conditions that exist among special population groups in the U.S. 
Um, and I'll kind of leave it up to you guys if you want to continue to play this game or if there's not really an interest. Um, I'm kind of good either way. So it's, it's really up to y'all and what's the best way to kind of learn this information so that way it sticks. Kind of open. If you want to just go through the questions and then we'll just give everyone a chance to answer it. And then if anybody does answer it, I'll write down some bonus points um, for their name next to their name. So I see that McKenna answered that first one in the chat box. Um, it means people don't get as good at healthcare as people because of race, gender, and more. So I will, uh, I will just write down score on my end and give everyone some bonuses, maybe on some assignments or something. Okay, that would be awesome. Yeah, and if you could, yeah, keep up with the chat because I'm having a hard time uh, with like being able to find it. No, I got you. You're fine. Thank you. Okay, so the next one, what is an individual source that contributes to health disparities? So there was several that we talked about, um, and you can just name one if you can remember. Smoking, okay, awesome, so that was um, kind of an individual health behavior as a source. Social class and income. That's good. Those are all right. All right. Thanks for answering those. Yeah, so health behavior, smoking, diet, um, social class, all of those would fit. Okay, so what is a provider source that contributes to health disparities? So provider meaning like the kind of doctor or health professional. Um, what are some things that can contribute to health disparities on their end? This one might be a little bit harder to remember. Biases? Mm-hmm, yep. Bias. Uh, and then kind of that cultural linguistic barrier. Okay. And the, like I said, these are gonna get a little bit harder. So what is social determinants of health? Um, this was a lot to unpack. So really kind of any piece that you remember would be helpful. I don't know if y'all can hear my cat in the background, but he is trying his hardest to get in. He's a little needy. So what kind of um, falls under that umbrella of social determinants of health? Stress, okay. That's a good one. Income level, mm -hmm. unemployment, mm -hmm. yeah, those are all definitely ones. Okay. So yeah, we have poverty, kind of unequal access to healthcare, you know, lack of education, stigma, and racism. So those are all can contribute and are kind of under that umbrella of social determinants of health. 
All right, let's go for 500. How can health disparities impact future generations? And so there is a specific example that I mentioned kind of about women. This one may be hard to remember. All right, I think this one, I don't, I think this one might be too hard. So we'll just look at the answer. Um, so like I mentioned before, you know, pregnant mothers can experience chronic stress during their pregnancy, which also in turn affects their baby's health, puts them at a higher risk for de developmental delays or behavioral problems. Okay, you're going to type that. Well, all right. Well, that is all the questions on this side. And I actually have to hop off because I have something at two that I need to prepare for really quick. Um, but is there any questions or anything um, that you're wanting to comment on or ask about or any confusion that you've had? It can be about anything. I think that was super helpful and, and wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah, no worries. Um, I'm glad I got to meet all of you guys and um, that we were able to talk a little bit about this. Yeah. Yeah. It's a huge, it's a huge issue. Um, mm -hmm. one I don't think a lot of people think about is, is how so many other, um, factors play in somebody's personal health. Mm -hmm. so, um, it's super important. Tanner says, thank you as well. Oh, that, so. thank yeah. you all for listening and for being open to, to kind of understanding and learning about this topic. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, go love on your cat. I'm sure they want some loves. <laughs> and thank you so much for everything. Yeah, no problem. I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye. Oh, you just want to make me host again that way. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, sorry. Let me see if I can reclaim it real quick. Okay. Do, 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 do. Reclaim host. There we go. All right. You're all set. See ya. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Bye. All right. Oh, McKenna, I saw your thank you as well. Awesome. So any, um, any comments, anybody want to, um, can I talk about anything? Okay. So um, let's see here. Not sure if what Jillian does with um, homework assignments. I feel like I should know since I'm usually in the class all the time with y'all. Um, I don't have the, the agenda, but I did want to, um, I did kind of want to just talk really quick um, that like just kind of in broad base, just thinking about like etiquette and in future classes, you know, I know a lot of you are doing great. I just want to like make this an overall announcement for the whole class. Just make sure that we're, we're being mindful that that words impact people um, in the chat boxes. And uh, when, when a speaker is presenting, it's, it's so important. Uh, if you, if we were sitting in a classroom setting and a, and a speaker was presenting, you wouldn't be, um, randomly saying uh, random things while someone is presenting. And in the same way, when somebody is um, presenting in a Zoom format, just make sure that that if you have a question or you feel like you need to ask something, just try to like raise your hand um, first. Or um, if there's like an emergency and you, there's something happens, you can privately message me. But um, let's keep, I, I kind of just want to say moving forward, no, no individual chats in the chat boxes. Um, uh, just it's, it's disruptive to the teacher and it can lead to inappropriate rabbit holes and conversations and um, 
So just kind of want to say, moving forward, let's, let's avoid, let's avoid that problem and just not, not use the chat box at any time, unless you have a question. And then in which case, just like I said, raise your hand or reach out to me privately so that we can address your question or concern or whatever may be going on. Um, I also want to say that, that everybody is entitled to opinions and a lot of people have different beliefs. Um, however, we have to be mindful that there are, are different um, people with different backgrounds, people of different gender identities and, and orientations. And we, we need to be mindful that they are allowed to exist with us. And, um, and there is space in this world for everybody from all walks of life. And, um, and I, I just want to say that there is a very hard and fast rule that we are not going to be a, a, a intolerant class that does not um, allow other people who are different from us to um, have a safe space here. So um, no anti LGBTQ talks, um, no racism talks, no sexism uh, kind of comments. I will quickly call them out. Um, we need to be mindful that there's just, there are, um, this is a big world and uh, there, there are a lot of people there. And if we, there's something that we don't understand uh, about people that we should um, just do our, our research and, and become educated and, and listen to people and learn from other people's experiences. So I just wanted to, to just kind of make that clear right now that that we are um, just be kind to other people, right? So, all right, it is um, two o'clock. I believe Miss Jillian is probably still very much occupied uh, at the doctor's office. I see that she has um, dropped off. So I will um, let her know that we are ending class. And then if she has anything else to add or any homework stuff to assign that, um, We'll just make sure that it gets emailed out to everybody. Um, any final comments, questions, concerns, any thoughts or anything? All right, we are, we're here for you at any time. Feel free to uh, email, text us, uh, whatever. All right, thank you all so much. Um, thanks many of you for participation and for being attentive and I appreciate you all. All right, have a great day. Bye.